Redditors who almost died, what happened? Slept through a house fire. Ended up with 85% burns. I just slept through the fire. Well, slept plus I think foggy due to smoke inhalation. But it was radiant heat that caused my burns, not the actual flame. I spent 14 months in the hospital during which I had pneumonia three times, my lung collapsed and I had a cardiac arrest. At 25, roommate had talked me into training for a 10k trail run. I started vigorously training, lost some weight, got some decent conditioning, and about a week before the run I noticed a small amount of blood in my urine. Went to the urgent care, they took a sample, didn't see anything unusual and the doctor chalked it up to joggers hematuria which is somewhat common apparently. He told me to pause my running for a bit and it would clear up. I decided to continue training and to finish my run because I had worked so hard, and would stop for a couple weeks afterwards to heal. I finished my run with a decent time, about middle of the pack. Afterwards I quit running and waited. And waited. Nothing was clearing up, if anything it was getting worse, and then pain started to accompany the blood. Then it would get darker and darker, until clots would come out. I was being dumb and still going off the doctor's original claim that it would clear up on its own. One night, we decided to go watch Avatar in the theaters and I got a large drink. Held the pee during the whole movie because I didn't want to miss anything. After the movie finished I went to the bathroom and felt dizzy, so we went home and I laid down to rest. Middle of the night, had to pee again, so got up, went a lot and it was so much blood it was like a murder scene. Finished and walking back to my room I passed out, and luckily hit my roommate's door on my way down waking him up. He got me up and we went to the ER. After multiple tests, a CT scan discovered a tumor in my bladder that had grown to 6 centimeters, and every time I relieved my bladder, the pressure burst blood vessels supplying it. I had 4 units of blood transfused. The doctor says I was lucky I didn't die right on the floor of my apartment. That roommate was the best man at my wedding a few years later, and is the godfather of our daughter. I was 20 and on my way to work on a Saturday morning. I had a 95 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Driving behind me was a mid-2000s Chevrolet Impala. He was swerving all over the road. He'd get right up on my rear bumper, swerve, fall behind, swerve, speed up, repeat. I tried to ignore him and kept driving. That was my first mistake. Eventually he fell out of sight. I finally come up to the parking lot, which is just over the crest of a hill and on the left. I'm waiting for traffic to clear to make the left turn. I have my wheels turned already so I can hit the gas and get into the parking lot, my second mistake. While I'm waiting, I see something fast come up behind me in me rear view. It's the Impala absolutely flying up at me. I didn't even have time to curse when the lights went out. I woke up being stretchered out of an ambulance in the worst pain of my life. I felt like someone was sitting on my chest as I couldn't breathe. Then, lights out again. I wake up one more time in what I think is a hospital operating room to what feels like my right armpit on fire, then out again. I finally regain full consciousness in a hospital bed with a chest tube in my right side, and four in my left arm, a neck brace on, and excruciating pain in my chest, head, and neck. My parents were both there, and one of the first things I remember saying was my car's totaled, isn't it? The Impala driver had fallen asleep behind the wheel and pressed fully on his accelerator pedal. He hit the rear end of my car at an estimated 75 miles per hour. Because I had my wheels turned, I was pushed into oncoming traffic where a brand new Toyota RAV4 then smashed into my passenger door at an estimated 50 miles per hour, causing my car to whiplash around in the opposite direction it was rolling. The impact was so hard, it tore my rear wheel off and sent it a quarter mile down the road. They found parts of my rear brakes in a tree. The passenger door was touching the center console. The front bolts for my seat had sheared out of the floor. Originally, first responders thought the reclining mechanism had broken because I was laid back in the car. I suffered six broken ribs, a punctured lung, a severely sprained neck, a nasty concussion, a perforated eardrum, and various other relatively minor abrasions. Aside from the half-deafness in my left ear, newfound motion sickness, and occasional neck stiffness, I'd say I made a full recovery. The other driver was a few years older than me. He was charged with driving to endanger. He had his license revoked for three months. Apparently he was a security guard that had his shift changed to overnight, and wasn't used to the time change. He had everything in his parents' name so I only got him for the personal belongings that were damaged slash destroyed. Only got $1,600 from him personally. He was licensed in one state using his mother's address, but lived in another at his father's address. Anytime I brought that up I was told you can't do anything with that, 
It's between him and the state. When I got my wisdom teeth taken out I got four sedation. The next day my forearm was a little sore. The next day it was more sore and a little red, so I called the oral surgeon who said it was fine and to take some Advil. The next day it was more red and more sore, same advice from the oral surgeon. The next day the redness was tracking up my vein, and the oral surgeon said it was fine. The first nurse on the other hand firmly said to drop whatever I was doing and go straight to the ER. When I got to the ER they skipped me ahead of everyone in the waiting room and straight back to put different broad spectrum antibiotics IVs in each arm, and started me on a third one in pill form because I had a blood infection. I specifically remember them saying something to the effect of we don't have time to figure out what it is, we just need to kill it. In December 2019 I bought my first business. I'd never owned a business before, but there I was writing checks for 50k each week and watching my bank account dwindle down to a few hundred bucks, only to hope checks would come in the following week. Then I did it all over again, but the next week there's a payroll due. It took me a couple of months to get comfortable with the routine. Well if you do the math, a couple of months brings us to March 2020. Now I'm writing checks for 50k each week, but almost no one is paying me. All my big customers are in NYC, and NYC is shut down. I am stressed out of my mind. My wife says that we need to get life insurance because of the business and I think that's a pretty okay idea. The life insurance company says I need to get a physical before they will insure me, so they send a nurse to do blood work. She tells me that my blood pressure is high and I should get it checked out. Normal me would be like, yeah, whatever. But for some reason I made an appointment for a physical at a regular doctor. I go and they also do blood work. That was a Monday. Tuesday comes, and I get the results from the life insurance blood work. All of the kidney numbers are through the flipping roof bad. I call my regular doctor, and they say it has to be an error. No one with numbers like that would be living, never mind being upright and coherent. I should come in the next day when their blood work would be back. So I wait until the next day. Go into the doctor's office, and wait to be seen. The doctor comes in with an ashen face and asks me if I'm feeling okay because according to what she sees, my kidneys are non-functional. I spent 8 days in the hospital bringing my blood back from being basically poisonous. I was told I had a few days left if I didn't get to the doctor. I am now on dialysis 3 days a week and waiting for a kidney transplant. My life is completely upside down. When I was 3 I tripped over my shoelace and dove into a marble table. The table shattered my nose and skull. It also fully exposed my eye, all the way past my temple. They had to remove pieces of marble from my brain. Doctors told my parents to start considering funeral arrangements. I'm 34 now. I was bathing in a closed room with a gas water heater that was on cause someone else was showering. I woke up naked on the kitchen floor with my parents standing over me looking freaked out. I got gassed and they had to break the door down when I wasn't answering their calls. There was poor ventilation in the bathroom and a subsequent carbon monoxide buildup. Three years ago I was 33 and started gaining a lot of weight when I wasn't even eating a lot. I started to lose energy and was getting short of breath fast. Went to a doctor for the first time in 5 years and my blood pressure was 185-149. I was admitted to the hospital and when I was lying down it felt like my head was underwater. Over the next 4 days I lost 54 pounds of water weight while in the hospital. I was in kidney failure and congestive heart failure. Today I take meds for blood pressure and feel a lot better, but still have to take pills to get rid of excess water. When I had a wisdom tooth removed it was really deep so they had to cut bone to get to it. Over the next few days my face was swollen and every time I called the oral surgeon, he kept saying, it's fine, it's normal, and acted annoyed that I was calling. Then the side of my face started getting bigger and bigger, to the point my right eye was shut. It looked like I had a small watermelon in my cheek. Everywhere I went people were staring, it was insane. Then it started to hurt really bad, so I called the surgeon again and he said, you have to calm down, it's normal. Finally I went to the ER when the pain became too much. So we walk in and I was in the habit of holding my hand over that side of my face in public, so I walk up to sign up and my fiancé started filling out the paperwork. As soon as I took my hand away two nurses jumped up and took me straight back, ahead of everyone. Finally a doctor comes back, looks in my mouth and for some reason she shoved her finger on the wound. You ever had something hurt so bad that tears start coming before you even realize how much it hurts? She said I had a serious infection and when she pushed on the wound pus started shooting out. I was in the ER for like 3 days on a constant 4 and morphine drip. When I saw the surgeon again I told him about it, 
and showed him a picture of my face. He just looked away and said, you should have called me, that's not that bad, you were fine. I never went back there. Healing from a severe concussion I lived alone and was unconscious for 2.5 days. No food. No water. No meds. My bladder finally force releasing brought me out of it. My legs were all mottled. The next day, as I was still processing what had happened one of my toes was still discolored, gray. My bowel movement the day after I came to was blood filled. Everything in my body had started to settle. If the absolute need to pee and realization of peeing the bed hadn't brought me to, there's no doubt I would have died. Appendicitis that progressed into a ruptured appendix. Extremely painful. The first surgery failed so I had a second surgery that fortunately was a success. Surgeon flushed all my organs through to minimize the risk of blood poisoning. Fortunately the antibiotics won. Scary thinking about what could have been if I waited even one more day to go into the doctors. Everyone listen to your body you know if something isn't quite right. Don't leave it too long. I almost drowned swimming out to a boat with some friends that was coming in with food for us. I was worn out from running on the sand dunes for a couple of hours. I didn't make it halfway to them before my muscles were completely giving out and I was getting bad cramps. Tried to float on my back but was breathing too heavy to float. I waved my arm up in the air signaling I need help. To my surprise a cigarette speedboat saw me in trouble from the shore and quickly unanchored and rushed over to me and saved my life. Two guys jumped in to grab me and pulled me in the boat and helped me meet back up with my friends. I hugged both of these guys as these strangers definitely saved my life. I was a sophomore when this happened. The day after Rance 01 was released, I was on my way back home on my moped when I see a slow truck, 20 to 30 tons, and decided to pass it. When speeding up I hit a brick, the road was undergoing construction, and fell with my head directly put under the truck's left upper tire and blacked out for about 1 to 2 seconds. Then woke up to the sound of the tire pushing my helmet like sandpaper being scraped against each other right beside my ears. I sprang up immediately and was very relieved that my head is still where it belongs. Ten years later, I still have PTSD and never try to overtake any car even if it is slow. I was working in a power boiler a couple years ago doing inspections of welds on tubes being replaced. Basically the vertical walls of the boiler are made of 2 inches pipes with half an inch of steel membrane between them to space them and seal between them. The replacement tube that was behind me was about 30 tall and had the membrane attached already so it looked like a 30 weird battle axe that was poorly attached in place with a piece of wire. The looks on the faces of the people to the right of me when the wire broke and this giant axe tube almost chopped me in half were terrifying. I didn't see it but I heard it hit the scaffold tube behind me and felt the shock and the wind off of it. Huge safety stand down. Scaffold inspection and replacement where it hit an investigation into the incident. One boilermaker tried to catch it as it fell 2 a.m. lacerated his hand. I still can't get the look on my friend's face out of my mind as he thought I was about to die. Hiking the Angels Landing Trail at Zion National Park with a friend a few years ago. The weather was gorgeous and although it wasn't peak season yet the trail was relatively busy. There are spots along the trail where you're only a few feet from a thousand foot drop. We had to step aside to let some people come down the trail, we were standing on pretty smooth rock with a short gentle slope down to one of the drop-offs and I felt my feet start to slide backwards. In a moment of sheer panic I flung myself forward and grabbed the ground. My friend, not realizing what had just happened, snapped a pic as I was standing back up and in that photo you can see the stress and sheer terror on my face. 10 out of 10 the best hike I've ever done, but when that trail is busy it gets exponentially more dangerous and I'm never surprised when I hear about fatalities at Zion. A tree fell on me. Midsummer doing tree work for a landscape company on Cape Cod. We were tasked with removing dozens of dead oaks that peppered a client's 75 acre estate. We were a week into the job and had gotten pretty comfortable and complacent with felling some large trees. It was my turn to take on a very large Y shaped oak, roughly 3 feet in diameter. The tree was located on a slight hill, so it looked like a pretty cut and dry notch and drop using gravity. I make my notch, and as I'm cutting, the tree twists and falls laterally rather than down the hill. The tree fends up getting caught in another young sapling in between the Y shape at the very top. The sapling is bent over and spring loaded under the weight of the other tree. After some clever cutting we get most of the larger origins tree on the ground but a larger section is still caught in the upper parts of the sapling, with a section laying on the ground. This part is roughly 2 feet in diameter and 25 to 30 feet long. This is where it gets spicy. Here's what we should have done, put a rope on the hanging limb and rip it out with our truck. 
damage everything around it but walk away safe. In our infinite wisdom this is not what we did in order to appease our clients. I start cutting sections off the large hanging limb and sure enough I make a cut turn around and lock my chainsaw and then, bang, the lights go out. I come to being pinned underneath the limb, which had basically slingshotted up into the air and then come sliding out of the other tree like a half-ton pile driver, hitting me in the back behind my right shoulder. So there I am pinned underneath a tree, and the next thing I see is my buddy's boots next to my face and I can feel the tree move above me ever so slightly. It was one of those adrenaline-fueled moments where people get Herculean strength, saw it firsthand. He went back later and tried to move the tree and couldn't. I know this is my only chance at freedom and I slide out from under the tree and gather myself on my knees. Dazed and confused I am kneeling, spitting up blood, chunks of teeth, and dip spit. The cause, as I later come to find out, my face had hit a rock as I was driven into the ground. This rock was also about three inches from my chainsaw blade. All of this is happening and for some reason I can't hear anything, finally dawns on me my earplugs are still in so I take those out and all I can hear is my friend screaming, are you okay? Do we need an ambulance? I initially said yes but then I remembered how poor I was and that we were in the middle of nowhere and it'd be just faster to get in the truck and drive. My buddy gets me up and gets his arm around me and we wobbly walk to the truck together. I can feel my lip is sort of weird feeling and when I get to the truck I look in the mirror and see almost half my top lip has been cut off and is hanging from my face. We hop in the truck and take off, 5 minutes into the drive my vision starts to tunnel and I know the lights are going out so I blast the radio and stick my head out the window which does the trick and I don't pass out. Ironically I think the song playing was Kesha's Timber. We get to the ER where I walk in under my own power, lo and behold there's no one at the front desk. So I'm standing there blood dripping down my face with a paper water cup full of blood and Copenhagen fine cut trying to catch it all so I don't make a mess, ringing a bell for assistance. Nurse comes out without looking at me and asks, what can I do for you? As she hands me a clipboard. She finally looks up and her eyes go wide. This happens as I'm writing my reason for visit today, which was, a tree fell on me, which I thought was hilarious. She rushes around and gets me immediately seated in a wheelchair and gives me a neck brace. I end up with 37 stitches in my face and mouth and a couple cracked teeth. Figured if the tree had hit me a couple inches to the right it would have knocked my head clean off or paralyzed me at a minimum. I got the bill in the mail later in the month. Cost me about tree fitty. Six months later the same plastic surgeon in the ER operated on me when I cut a finger off. It was also then that I decided to change professions. Have an MFA in oil painting and I'm a full-time high school art teacher now.